Now we're going to work on the neck of the dog, so just turn your work over. I have the right side facing me, and I'm starting in the back, and I'm going to join in the stitch just after one of the corners. And I'm going to bring up a loop with the same colored yarn, and then tie a knot. And then you're going to chain one. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around except for the corners. When you reach the first corner, come back and I'll show you what to do on the corners. So here you can see how I made one single crochet across the back of the head and I came to my first corner or my first seam where the two panels connect and I'm going to single crochet two stitches together. So you just take your crochet hook go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. I have two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over, which should be on the next panel, and then bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. So you're going to do that on one, on each of the four corners where the two panels meet, one single crochet, two stitches together, and in the rest of the stitches, you're just going to resume one single crochet in every stitch around. And do this for one round and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started and my stitch count is 48, but you may have a stitch count that varies slightly because of connect sewing the panels and just it can vary but usually it's within one or two. You're pretty close to what I end up with. If you don't, don't worry about it. You can still just maintain that stitch count, whatever stitch count that you got after you finished one round. And then you're just going to maintain that stitch count for the next three rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and then come back. So again, I got a stitch count of 48, but you can be off by a stitch or two, it's fine, it's not going to make that big of a difference. The only difference is I'm going to be maintaining a stitch count of 48 for the next four rounds, and you'll maintain the stitch count that you got after that first round with the single crochet two stitches together on each of the corners. So go ahead, finish four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish your four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over and then just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the neck onto the body. So now we're ready to make the ears before we go on to the body. So go ahead and get your same colored yarn as the head and you're going to take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. And then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down in a loop around the crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 12. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 12 and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 12, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just bring up a loop and make a single crochet and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and this is going to give you a stitch count of 11 when you're finished. So now you're going to chain one, turn your work, 
and you're not going to go into the space right beneath the chain one. That chain one counts as your first stitch for this next row and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And you're going to repeat this five times. So this one counts as your first one and then you're going to make four more for a total of five, not including that first one we made. And your stitch count will be a stitch count of 11 for the next five rows. So you're going to chain one and then one single crochet in every stitch. So I finished that fifth row and this is how my work looks so far. So you can see that if we count the first one we made, you actually have a total of six rows. And when you finish your last stitch, you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and then that will give you a stitch count of 10 because we didn't chain one. So now you should have a stitch count of 10 and you're going to turn your work again after you finish that last stitch you're not going to chain one. You're going to work into the next stitch over and make your single crochet and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and now you're going to end up with a stitch count of nine and then now you have a stitch count of nine you're just going to turn your work again after you finish that last stitch and you're going to keep repeating this and you'll notice that by making turning your work and not making a chain one and then making one single crochet in every stitch across, you're decreasing the stitch count for the row by one. So this time I'll have a stitch count of eight and then I'll turn my work, go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and I'll keep repeating this and what you're doing is you're creating a triangle towards the top of the ear by decreasing each row by one stitch count. So I'll make one more with you and then I'll let you finish. So I just finished that row and I have a stitch count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to turn my work, go into the next stitch, and then this time I should have a stitch count of six. So you're going to keep doing this until you get down to a stitch count of two and then come back. So now I have a stitch count of two, one, two, and I'm going to turn my work and then I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then go ahead and finish off. Just pull a little bit through to bury into your work. And then you need two of these. So after you finish your two ears, you're going to take your tapestry needle and put it onto the short yarn end at the top where you finished off, and you're just going to weave it into your the inside of the ear to kind of bury it into the work. And then you're ready ready to sew the ears onto the dog. So now you're just going to get your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and I took my ear and for the ear it may curve in slightly so that's the side that I'll have facing forward towards the face of the dog and I also took the inner part of the ear and folded it over on itself so I took about one, two, three stitches and folded it in three to four stitches and then it's ready to sew onto the head of the dog. So I lined up the ear. Here is the front of the head and I counted back one, two rows and then lined up the ear. After that second row 
and then I sewed right at the edge where the panel met the top of the head and then sewed the ear in place. So this is what my ears look like after sewing them on. And then here's what they look like in the back. And then it may change for different dogs. Like for this dog I had one, two, three, four, five stitches between when I sewed the ears on this one. So you just want to make sure that when you sew them on that they're symmetrical and they look the same on both sides. And then this is what it looks like from behind. So for this one I actually curved it in a little bit too. Folded it in on the inside and also curved it back a little bit. So you can see how you want to design your ears for your dog. And here's a look again at the one I just did. So now I'm going to show you how to make the body. And I'm just going to show you the one body that I made. So there's two ways that you can make the body. You can make four separate panels. One, one for the top, which is two. The other side, which is three. And then the bottom which is four. Or you can just make, if you're making it all one color, you can just add up all of the panels and just make one big huge roll. But I like the different color on the bottom. So one of the panels I made in a beige color and for my other dog I'm going to use my white sparkle, the same that I used for the eyes, instead of the beige. So you can have fun with the colors and use whatever colors that you want. And I'm going to show you the measurements when I'm done. So for I'm going to show you how to make each of the panels. So you're going to be making two side panels, one bottom panel and one top panel. And then you're going to make a front panel and a back panel. So I'm going to start with my same colored yarn as my head of the dog and you're going to take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around the crochet hook. I'm just going to show you a chain of four but you're going to be making a chain of 46. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 46 and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 46, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you just bring up a loop make a single crochet and then just make one single crochet in every stitch back across and that's going to give you a stitch count of 45. Then, this is what mine looks like, you're going to make a chain of one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to repeat this pattern. Chain one, turn your work, one single crochet in every stitch across. And you're going to do, this is going to count as your first one, don't count this other row. And you want, including this row, you're going to make 15 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. Each row will have a stitch count of 45. So I ended up with 16 total rows and when you finish your last single crochet you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the pieces together. So you're going to need three panels and like I said another way that you can do it is just sew all of the panels 
just continuous rows if you wanted to, if you didn't, but um, on video tutorial I'm just showing you the three separate panels. If you were going to make just one huge panel, it would be 40, a total of 45 rows. I'm just going to give you the measurements for the panels. So the panel measures, let's see if I can measure it in inches, approximately 11 inches by three and a half inches. So now you could make one more panel in this color or you could use a beige color or a white sparkle color like I'm using. So you'll end up with a total of four panels, one in the white color or beige color and then three in the tan color. So now you should have all of the panels for the body. You have I made mine with the white sparkle yarn for the bottom of the body and different yarn styles may affect the size of your panel. So because I used the white sparkle instead of the same Red Heart style yarn, you can see how it's slightly smaller. But um, So if you're using this white sparkle yarn, you may want to increase a couple more chains in the length as well as the number of rows for the width. But for mine, I just made it the same size, so I'm just going to kind of stretch it and um, sew it together because it's going to be the bottom of the body anyway, so um, I'll just sew the sides and the top panel in place. So I have three panels, two side panels and the top panel for the body, and then I have the bottom panel in the white sparkle. And I also made the front panel. So again, the front panel I made it the same size, but it's going to be slightly smaller than if you use like a Red Heart yarn. Actually, it's uh, not too much smaller. So sometimes it can be smaller. So just keep that in mind when you're if you're using a different style of yarn. So I'm going to show you how to make the back panel. So this is the front panel, and you can decide if you want to make yours like beige or a white color like I did. And I use the sparkle white. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate it on video but it actually in person it looks really you can see the sparkles in it so it just adds a little bit more to your amigurumi so now I'm going to show you how to make the back panel the back panel is made the same way as the front panel so you're going to need two of them and like I said you can make one in white and one in tan or two tan it's up to you so I'm using tan for my back panel the first thing you're going to do is just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 15, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then just bring up a loop and make your single crochet and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and that's going to give you a stitch count of 14 so now when you reach the end you're going to chain one turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and every stitch back across. So you're going to repeat this pattern. It looks like I splintered the yarn. Let me just fix that. You're going to repeat this pattern of chain one and then one single crochet in every stitch back across. And you're maintaining the stitch count of 14 for each row. So after. I'm going to go ahead and just count this first row as one, and this is the second row. So you want a total of 16 rows. And then come back. So now you should have the front and back panel as well. I'm just going to measure the back panel for you. So the back panel is seven and a half centimeters by nine 
centimeters. So now we're ready to sew the panels together. Just use the same colored yarn and your tapestry needle and you're going to lay, lay two of the panels together on top of each other with the right sides together and then you're just going to sew the panels together just like you did for the head. Make sure that you have the side that you want showing on the inside and then just sew the pieces together lengthwise. Remember that when you go to sew on your the bottom panel, the beige or the white panel, that you want it to go on the bottom, so just keep that in mind when you go to sew that panel in place. So you just sew it the same way. You make sure that the sewn ridge is on the wrong side and you can always tell by opening it up and seeing the correct seam that's on the right side. So after you finish sewing all of the panels together, so you can see how I have the white sparkle on the bottom, I'm going to put the front panel in place. So the front panel I made mine the white color, so I'm just going to sew. And again, you want to make sure, just like you did for the head, that you have the ridge side of it on the wrong side as you sew. So here's the front panel. Now, when you're sewing on the back panel, you need to leave one of the sides open because you have to turn the body inside out. So don't completely sew the back panel in place, otherwise you're not going to be able to turn the body inside out. So, go ahead and sew the back panel on and again, leave the bottom panel unsewn. So only the two sides and the top portion. So now this is what my body looks like and this is the wrong side and I left the one side open after sewing on the back panel. So now you can take and turn the body inside out. And then you can go ahead and stuff the body with craft stuffing. So this is what the body looks like after I place the craft stuffing. It looks really good. Here's the back, the front, I mean. And you could tell that it didn't really matter that the white portion was a little bit smaller. It actually looks really good, so I didn't even really have to adjust the size. And the body looks good. So now you're ready to sew the two ends together using for mine, you want to use the tan colored yarn and not the white colored yarn. So I have my tan colored yarn and I'm going to start from the inside so that my knot will be on the inside and the loose yarn end. And then I'm just going to go back in so I can tie a knot on the inside. And then you're getting ready to sew the pieces together. So now I'm just going to grab a stitch of the white portion of the body. and then go back in and then out the back portion of the body and then you're just going to go back and forth sewing the two pieces together. So this is how mine looks after I've finished and again you're not going to really see it is going to be on the back portion of the body and it's on the bottom. So you can't even really tell that that's where you closed off the body. And now you're ready to sew the head in place. So go ahead and stuff the head with craft stuffing and then you're going to get your tapestry needle to get ready to sew the head onto the body. Make sure that the head is towards the front. So you want the front panel, the beige or the white portion to be in front or whatever side that you want towards the front of the body and the head. 
Then you want to make sure that the head is straight. So the nose should be centered facing forward. Then you take your tapestry needle and you just go in and out along the base of the head. So don't worry if you don't get every stitch. You can make several rounds of sewing. So I just go about a stitch over so you don't show a large gap in your stitch as you sew. And then I just come up through the body and then up a little bit further along on the head. And then the whole time you want to make sure that the head is facing straight. And like I said, even though you may skip a few stitches, you can make several rounds as you sew. So for this style of yarn that I used, the head is holding up really well. So it's not leaning forward, it's fitting perfectly onto the body. So sometimes, depending on the yarn, the head may lean forward. And if yours does that and you want to pull it back a little bit, you can create a wrinkle at the back of the head. So you just kind of pull, pull the head back and then you can sew down a wrinkle. And then that helps your dog to look straight too. This is what mine looks like after I finished sewing the head in place. You can see that I went about, let's see, one, two, three, about four, or about a finger's breadth back from the front panel to sew mine in place and I kept the nose straight as I sewed. Now for the puppy feet, you can start with your beige or your white colored yarn or you can just make them all the tan color. It's up to you. I'm going to show you how to start with white and then change colors. For my other puppy, Great Dane Dog, I made all the tan color for all four feet for that one, but for this one I'm going to start with the sparkle white colored yarn and show you how to change colors. So we're going to start with the magic circle. You're going to take your yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then just wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice. And then you're just going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers and bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So here's one, and two, and we're going to make six, a total of six. And then you're just going to close up the magic circle, just like we did before. And then just turn your work, and you're going to make two single crochet into that first stitch in the round. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches total in the round. So two single crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round. Go ahead and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end on the back to close it up. And then you're going to use your loose yarn end, place it right where you left off, and we're going to continue with increase rounds. So for those that know how to make increase rounds, we're going to be increasing to one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern 
all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. So now you should have 18 total stitches in the round. I'm just going to close the center of my magic circle a little bit more. So now I'm not going to be giving you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add six to your previous stitch count. So after we finish the next increase round, if you add six, you'll have a total of 24 stitches in the round. And so again, we're going all the way up to one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into six stitch. So that's an easy way to check your stitch count. Because we started with a magic circle of six, then you're just going to be adding six to your finished previous count and that'll give you what your new stitch count should be. So now for the next row round, you're going to be making one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. So for the next increase round it's going to be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. Then for the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around. And the last increase round is one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So after that last increase round you should have a total of 42 stitches in the round. And now just move your yarn marker up and for one round you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So then go ahead and take and remove the yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and we're going to make the front portion of the paw. So we're going to single crochet two stitches together 12 times. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. So that's one. And we're going to make a total of 12 of them. So I'm just going to show you a couple of them to get you started. So there's my second one. So you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. So go ahead, finish 12, I finished three so far, so you need nine more and then come back. So now you should have 30 total stitches in the round and you can see how you're starting to create the little front portion of the paw. And now you're going to move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make only one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker. So again only one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then just move the yarn marker up to where you left off and this time we're going to be making six single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to single crochet two stitches together six times. So after you finish the six single crochet two stitches together you're going to make one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches. I'm not sure if I said that on the last round of single crochet two stitches together. So you would have made one single crochet. After those 12 single crochet two stitches together, then you make one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches. 
Then you move the yarn marker up and made one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then you move the yarn marker up and you made six single crochet two stitches together. And you can see how it creates a nice out pouching for the paw. And then after you finish your six single crochet two stitches together, you just make one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker. So now you just you should have a total of 24 stitches in the round. And you can decide how many rounds you want with the white color before you change it to the tan color. So for mine, I'm going to move the yarn marker up and I'm going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around with the same color. So after you finish one round of one single crochet in every stitch around, just continue making one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the back of the paw. So when you reach the back of the paw, come back. So now I'm in the back of the paw. And this is what my paw looks like so far. And I'm going to add my new color now. So I'm going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. And then I'm going to bring in my new color. So now you're just going to bring up a loop with your tan colored yarn. And then you're just going to tie a knot. You can cut your previous colored yarn. And then just tie a knot with your new colored yarn, the loose yarn end. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 14 rounds total. So you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. You're not going to use that. You're going to start here and count 14 rounds. So you don't need a yarn marker because the color change will be your starting point for counting. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around until you finished a total of 14 rounds. So now you should have a total of 14 rounds and this is how the paw looks like so far. So the reason why I had you stop here is because now you're going to take craft stuffing and stuff the paw. So then after you finish placing craft stuffing into the paw you can go ahead and resume making more rounds. So go ahead and place your yarn marker right where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for seven rounds. So seven rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So then after you finished seven more rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and finish stuffing the leg completely with craft stuffing. After you finish stuffing the paw completely with craft stuffing, we're going to close up the, the paw or the leg. So just take your crochet hook and you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to keep crocheting two stitches together all the way around. So single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to keep doing this, repeating this, until the leg is almost closed. And then come back. So now you can see that it's starting to close. I've almost got it closed. I'm going to continue to make a few more. I just wanted to show you how I hold Sometimes I'll stick my finger in too to help support it. And then I'm almost closed. You can add more craft stuffing at this point, but I'm happy with the amount of stuffing in mine. So now we're going to slip stitch close. So you're going to skip the next stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. 
and then you're just going to repeat this until it's closed. So now I'm closed. I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you can just take your tapestry needle and then just go right where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere. And then just trim the loose yarn end. So now I just want to show you another trick because sometimes depending on the yarn that you're using you can see how this yarn creates larger holes where I was closing. So here's a little trick that you can do to sometimes cover those holes is just get some more of the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle and then you're just going to take and weave the yarn through make sure you leave a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work and then just kind of weave the yarn through the larger openings and then it just covers those holes so you can see how it covers it nicely and you could do the same thing on the paw as well if you wanted to the front of the paw and I'm just going to show you so sometimes on the front of the paw you can see the same thing so you can just kind of weave the same colored yarn through that part too if you wanted to and then that just helps to cover some of those gaps so you don't see the craft stuffing and then when you're finished and happy with the look you just go right where you have your loose yarn end and then just tie a knot and then you would just take your tapestry needle and then bury the loose yarn in just like you did before and then you have your paw you see that looks better so I'm happy with my look of the paw, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And you need four paws that are made the exact same way. So I finished all four of my feet, and I decided to go ahead and run the yarn through some of the gaps that show some of the craft stuffing. So you can see how I'm taking the same color with my tapestry needle and just weaving through some of the gaps and then that just covers up some of the craft stuffing and this is optional you don't have to do this if you don't want to but you can see how I just kind of weave the yarn through with my tapestry needle and then I'll end right here and tie a knot so now you're ready to sew the feet onto the dog so go ahead and grab two of the feet that you want for the front feet and I like to use my Dritz upholstery needles and I'm going to use my 12 inch needle and I'm going to use the same colored yarn as the top of the leg and the body to sew the legs, front legs on in place. The first thing you want to do is take one of the legs and make sure that the paw is facing forward and you're going to take your upholstery needle and you're going to go right through the side of the leg and you're going to come out on the opposite side at the same level and then just bring the yarn through make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the end you also want to have this, this yarn pretty long to make sure that you can go through the legs and the body twice so you can see I'm leaving a long loose yarn end on the other side of the leg 
And now you're ready to go through the body. So you're going to line up the front leg with the body. So for mine, I like to line mine up so that it's centered with the head of the body and also the leg is centered about mid, the mid portion of the body. And again, the paw needs to face forward. Once you have the, the leg positioned where you want it, then you just see where the yarn would enter the body from the leg and it's going to be about right there. So for mine, it's about two, four, six, eight, nine rows up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to nine stitches in. And then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and go in at that level with my um, upholstery needle, I mean, and then come out on the opposite side at the same level. And then I usually leave about an inch or two of yarn between the leg and the body and then you're ready to go through the opposite leg at the same level and again you want to make sure that the paw is facing forward. So now after you've gone through the other leg you're going to want to go about a stitch over and then go back through and then come out about a stitch over on the opposite side. And then you're just going to bring the yarn back through the leg and then you're going to go right back through the body and you're always going to be about a stitch over from where you exited the previous time. So here you can see where I exited the body and I'm just going to go about a stitch over and it could be below, next to, on the other side. You just have to be very careful you don't twist your yarn too much because you're going to have to pull or cinch the legs against the body. So you don't want your yarn to be twisted when you go to do that. So then you just come back through. And I always leave about an inch or two between the legs and the body. And then I like to go through two times. So I'll have four strands of yarn between the legs and the body. So now, after you've finished going through twice the legs and the body, you can see my strands of yarn between the legs and the body. Here's the other side. So then you can take and you can pull on those two loose yarn ends that you have where you went in and went out. So you just kind of pull on those gently. Don't pull on these too hard. Um, some yarn strands work are tougher than others. Um, but if you use your red heart, sometimes it tends to snap on you. So what you do is you just gently pull, and if you get resistance, you just pull on one of them. So you let go and just kind of gently pull on one and the other until you cinch the legs against the body. And then if you notice that you have yarn that didn't go, you just pull it up again, and then you just gently pull until you cinch the legs against the body. And then you can see how it cinches nicely. And then you have movable legs. Now when you get it down to where you like how the, the legs are cinched together, and say you want to have a little bit more, the legs a little bit more against the body, you can take and as you pull, kind of gently push down on the leg too, to kind of cinch and get the yarn to where you want it. And so I'm pretty happy with how mine looks. So then once you're happy with the look, you can take and just tie a knot. And then you're going to attach the back legs the same way. Just make sure that your back legs aren't higher or lower. They need to be the same level as the front legs. So then once you tie your knot, you're ready to bury the loose yarn ends. I'll show you how to do that. So I trimmed my loose yarn ends and then I just take my tapestry needle or darning needle and then you just go in right where you tied your knot and then come out on the opposite side anywhere and then just pull on the loose yarn end to bury it and then you can trim the loose yarn end. So then for the back legs you can see that I made them even with the front legs 
and this is about how much about one to two inches for the back end of the dog and then on the other side you can see this is how the other side looks and it looks like I have a couple dimples on this side so if you want just one dimple you would go a little bit further closer in but I'm going to try to pull that dimple out and then you have the front and the back legs that are movable and now I'm going to show you how to make the tail so for the tail you're going to use the same colored yarn and we're going to start with the magic circle And again, you're going to start with a slip knot. And this time you're going to put eight single crochet into the magic circle. There's four. So I have eight single crochet into the magic circle. I'm going to hold the base of the eight single crochet and then close up the magic circle just like you did before. And then turn your work. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 18 rounds. So just one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 18 rounds and as you make your rounds you're going to fold up the edges so that the loose yarn end will be in the center the wrong side and you can pull on that loose yarn end too if you need to close up the center of the magic circle so go ahead finish making one single crochet in every stitch around until you have 18 rounds or you just make it the length that you want your tail to be so you don't have to make yours 18 rounds like mine you could make it shorter or longer depending on how long you want your tail and then come back so then after you finish your one single crochet into every stitch for 18 rows you can go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch over just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook then go ahead and finish off just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the back of the dog so I just center the tail on the back of the dog and then you just go in and out all around the base of the tail and then just sew it in place